Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as we come together to worship God and praise God's name. Well, our um, the founder of the Methodism, um, John Wesley, used to ask his as the uh, followers, how is it with your soul? Have you heard that question? I'm sure if you were a Methodist for a long time, you have heard that question. How is it with your soul? Well, let's begin with that um, question. And, you know, that question, the answer doesn't come all that easily or quickly, right? You know, you have to examine how your soul is. and. You know, whether it is in peace, whether it's restless, or whether it's joyful, whether it's uh, filled with concerns, but at least for the next hour, as we are in the presence of God, may your soul find peace, and may your soul um, be richly blessed by the presence of God and the grace and love of God as well. So welcome all of you. There are some announcements in the bulletin. Um, we're celebrating the birthdays this week. Um, oh, for Mona, Mona Huckins and Marlene Huey, Katie Menard, Beth Allard, Rick Mills, happy birthday and Andrew Gagney and Scott Mayet. So remember these people in your prayers and also um, check with them how they are doing and you know celebrate the special day with them. Today we have um, the dedication of un Umpour Kids. So United Methodist Church is celebrating um, Umpour Sunday today. It, it, it used to be one great hour of sharing, remember? Um, and that now became Umpour Sunday. Um, so we have some Encore kits donated by you, uh, packed by Now Committee, and they are ready to be sent uh, off to the global um, places, you know, not just in the United States, but also uh, overseas as well. So please remember um, Encore um, in your prayers as well as during the offering. Um, this is a day that we collect the special offering as well. Now let us join our hearts and minds and souls as we prepare ourselves to encounter the spirit of the living God.
Good morning. My name is Susan Rapp, and I'm the liturgist for today's service. Please stand as you are able and join in the call to worship. Creator God, in the beginning you said, let there be light. We come into the light of your glory. Loving Christ, your judgment is the light of mercy and grace. We come into the light of your love. Holy Spirit, by your grace in us, we are the light for the world. We come into the light of your presence. Fill us that we may always live in your life. Let us sing together our hymn of praise. Immortal, invisible God, only wise. It's number 103 in your faith we sing him. <laughs> Be seated. 
Our first reading comes from Numbers chapter 21, verse 4 through 9, found on page 122 in your pew Bible. From Mount Hor they sent out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became discouraged on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and send it on a pole, and everyone who was bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. May God bless the reading of this scripture.
Thank you for that beautiful piece of music. Um, I'd like to invite all the children come to the front. I'm going to have you guys over this way. So go into the communion veil and come check this out. So, any of you want to open one of the bags and, yes, <laughs> open it and see what's in there. Tell us what's in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Open it. And maybe you don't have to open it and you can see what's in it. So, what do you see? No pens, no books, and paper, yeah. And pencils and crayons, scissors, eraser, roller, pencil sharpener. So would you consider these as something that you use every day in school? No? No? What do you what do you use to write something? The time has been changed since I was in school. So. <laughs> Pencils and notebooks, right? Um, well, I know you may not use like pencil sharpener all the time, right? Um, but you would use eraser, you would use ruler to you know to write something. You want to turn around and look at me? That's good. <laughs> I don't want your neck to be twisted. <laughs> um, and then you use crayons too. So what, uh, what else do you use in school? <coughs> what are some of the things that you use that's not in here? Hmm? Glue, OK. Yeah, glue. And uh, but most, mostly these are the necessary uh, things that you use in school, right? Yeah. And do you know where these go? Hmm? In our, yeah, that's right. We, you know, we use it for, um, you know, while we are studying on, you know, at the desk, right? Yeah. And these kids, we have 50 of them. And these will be all sent to the various places in the countries in Africa where <laughs> children need things like these so that they can also have, um, you know, these, these for their study. Um, these, each pet, each kid, <coughs> carries our love and when they receive these, you know, those kids who don't have these, I mean, this may be so easy to get for us, right, but not for those children, um, they will receive it. They will know that someone really cares about them, right? They will know that there's a church in America, you know, who really care about them enough to send them, um, to help them and support them, their studies. And one day, who knows, they may come to this country to study. And, you know, there are kids, you know, and there are, there's a school that we support, African University in Kenya. Um, and they come to this country and then study further. And those, um, these are the ways to support them. That's what we do. Um, there's a health kit that will go to the people, um, not only in the disaster and outside the US, but also for the people who expect, experience the, uh, the flood or other kind of natural disasters. Um, and those will go and help them to stay clean and keep things, um, keep their, you know, hygiene uh, 
uh, also. And then there's a blood bucket. There's only one there, but we're putting it together. And those are the ones that we go to the people um, who experience the blood. So they can also clean their house and then go back to their normal life. What do you think? They're pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. And you know, cool things that we do. So um, today we're going to. You're going to help us on behalf of the congregation. You guys are going to lay your hands on those school kids. You can put this bag. And then we will dedicate those kids. So let's see. It's in the bulletin. Dedication of the Umpour kids. We're going to do it. So will you lay your hands on the school kid or you know, yeah, the school kid? All right. We're going to do alternate, bell side first, and then organ side. So let's join together. The psalmist writes that the faithful should pray to God in troubled times. The psalmist writes that God surrounds us with songs of rescue. Reconciling God, we pray that those who need a rescue who are suffering from viruses, famine, forced migration, and climate disaster. The psalmist writes that faithful love surrounds us. Merciful God, thank you for Amkor, which shepherds communities through storms and other disasters. Thank you for preparing the table to nourish the hungry. Thank you for offering green pastures with resting places to restore souls and lives. Our cup overflows with abundance. Receive our gifts and transform them into acts of goodness and mercy that alleviate suffering and offer hope and healing to your people. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Our hymn of preparation is Christ Be Our Light, which is in the insert.
gospel lesson is the gospel written for us by John chapter 3 verses 14 to 21 and I would like to have you read along with me so please turn um, to page 864 of your New Testament um, so 864 Let us read it together. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his own Son, Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, turn on the light switch inside us so that through the word you gave to us, we may be led to the light of Christ. Amen. I don't know about you, but in the deep uh, winter, I often experience this seasonal affection disorder. Have you ever heard that wording? Um, so those who live in Northeast especially, um, you know, over winter, we don't have enough light into our system because the, you know, the winter is so dark and cold and, you know, the, the, um, the day is short. So there is something that's called sad light. So seasonal affection disorder light. So this is kind of artificial light system that you can turn on and you know have enough light from it. You know, so it will be kind of supplementing the natural light that you get. So I have those light, you know, and it, it's very helpful. You know, I have to tell you. Um, so I, you know, I would turn on, it's in, on my desk, and, you know, I would turn on the light, and it's so bright that I see things that I do not see under just natural light, like 
dust <laughs> or stain or clutter. You know, it's like so there. You know, sometimes you are so used to your environment under the same lighting, you don't get to see those when the light, you know, changes. All of a sudden, there are so many things that you get to see. So, you know, I wonder if this is helpful for my health, mental health, or is it giving me more trouble? <laughs> but nevertheless, I keep that light on for 15 minutes, sometimes 20, sometimes I go twice, you know, like 30 minutes. When that light goes off automatically, that's when you realize how dim it is, your environment. You know, it's almost like you're wearing sunglasses. You know, this, you are exposed to this bright light, and then when the light goes off, it becomes very dim. Everything seems to be a little darker. And it's amazing how we get used to that darkness and never know that there's dust or there's stain. Never know that light can be brighter so that we will get to see the truth clear. Let there be light. That's what God said when God created the world, right? So light and darkness got separated. And the light was what God intended for us. God wanted us to live in the light. And yet, it seemed like humans are drawn to darkness. Right? We, we read it from the very first human. They were created totally by the goodness and image of God. And the thing that they did was being drawn to the darkness. The serpent tempted them, saying that, did God ask you not to eat anything? And then these humans so get drawn to the serpent and um, its temptation, they were just going into it and went ahead and ate what was forbidden for them. And immediately, they got to know that they were in trouble. They did something that they were not supposed to do. So what did they do? They went under the darkness. They were hiding from God's light. But that wasn't the end of their relationship with God, right? God called them out and God gave them something to protect them and God kept watching over them. Same thing happened to the Hebrews, right? They cried out, you know, when they were oppressed by the Egyptians and God heard their cries and then rescued them out of Egypt. And now they're on the way to the promised land where the land produced milk and honey. But while they're in the wilderness, they couldn't trust God and they complained and they, you know, you can hear, almost hear them saying that, why did you bring, bring us out to this wilderness? Are you going to let us die in here? They were not faithful, being faithful to their covenant, to the covenant that God has built to them. I will be your God. You will be my people. And they were going into this darkness. The light switch was turned on. And they were in the darkness, and they were bit by serpents. But that wasn't the end 
the relationship with God, right? God sent the remedy. God sent the way that their life can be turned on again and they can come to the light by telling Moses to make a, a bronze serpent and then lift it up. And this means that, you know, it's so interesting, God sent the serpents. God could have removed the serpents, right? But God didn't remove the serpents. Instead, God put something that can heal their wounds. So if they were bit by the serpent, they will acknowledge, this is not just a physical healing, but also they'll acknowledge their own disobedience, their own sin, and their own distrust of God, and then accept it by lifting their heads up and obeying what God said. Look at the serpent. So changing their heart from disobedience to obedience. Not trusting to trusting. So that's what happened in the wilderness. God never ends the relationship or close the relationship with humans, no matter how bad they were or we are. And John, in, in, in John, Gospel of John, Jesus is talking with Nicodemus, who is the leader, who is the teacher, who is a Pharisee, who knows all these stories, right? He's familiar with this serpent. He's familiar with how God led the people of Israel to this land of milk and honey, and then all these years, how God saved them. So he is saying that just that serpent was lifted up, Son of God need to be lifted up. Which means that the people who were drawn to darkness, who were going under this dark, dark place, and, and do the things of hate, and evil and injustice. Those who are not coming to the light may see the light of God through Jesus Christ who will be lifted up so that those who believe in him may come to the light leaving the behaviors attitudes of darkness and then come to his light and leading others to the light. Sometimes in our lives, even among the believers, there are darkness, there are places that, that are dark. We go into that Sometimes by our own choice, but other times the light happens and take us to that dark place, right? Have you been in that dark place before? Darkness where God's love don't seem to be close to you, where you feel like there's no way that I can feel the presence of God. This is so hard and difficult. And sometimes it happens in life. And sometimes we choose to go into that place. That is so natural in our human life. We're living under the sinful condition that has been in this over-humanity since Adam. But we know that that's not the end of our relationship with God. That place has no last word.
for our relationship with God because God always opens opens up the possibility to come closer to God. And that's one way is through the light of Christ, right? Through the light of Christ, we believe in, we trust in what Jesus said, whosoever believes in me will have eternal life, not to be condemned. So, when we look at him, Jesus, who was on the cross, giving up his life for us to make us realize how much we are God's beloved, then we know that we are brought to this light. The light is there for us, and light is here for us. That's one way that we can be brought to the light from the darkness. Another way of God bringing or Jesus bringing us to his light is through people. When we are walking in the darkness, people comes to our path and they shine their light upon us and upon our path so that our path will lead us to the light of Christ. Have you ever experienced that someone showing up in your life leading you to the light of Christ? Have you ever experience the love of God through someone that is so strong and undeniable that all of a sudden that dim light is gone and the switch goes on and you see the light. So May, March 20, March 12th, 2022, there are lots of twos in this, this um, date, March 12th, 2022, that was two years ago, around this time, right? I was on my way to my former church, and I slipped on the ice, and I broke my humerus, and rest. It was broken. You know, it's not fractured or anything. I tried to look at my arm and I moved my shoulder. Arm wasn't there. Couldn't move. It was totally detached. So that was most painful, physically, most painful time of my life. Um, broken bones. I don't know if you have experienced that is such pain that I cannot describe any way other than like it's it's more painful than childbirth. <laughs> so um, that's that's a hard. Sorry, man. I know you cannot understand. <laughs> But I was not only broken physically, at the time I was broken in my heart as well. I was um, going through some difficult time with, with my ministry. So I was taken to the um, ER, and I know some of you heard this story because I shared this once in the chapel worship, uh, but many of you didn't hear it, so I wanted to share this. Um, so I was at Maine Medical Center in Portland for about six hours there, and there, <laughs> apparently there were a lot of people who broke their bones that day, you know, like, one after another, they were coming, and they were more serious condition than I was, so I was in the hallway the whole time. And when I was ready to leave that place, they did, you know, kinds of 
the first aid kind of thing and you know got the x-rays done and they set the um, the date for my surgery and I was in darkness can, as you can imagine I was getting ready and waiting for my middle son arrived to give me a ride home in that ER I got a phone call from the DS of Granite District telling me that the bishop wants to send me to First United Methodist Church in Rochester, New Hampshire. And I asked him, where is Rochester? <laughs> <laughs> you have to know that I'm, I'm new this country still like after 30 years I am still I don't know all the cities and you know he explained that he gave me just brief summary of the church where it is and what it is like and I have many stories to share from that day to the 22nd the day I came to meet the SPRC, for the first time drove into this parking lot and walked into the building. And I knew that the light came in in my life. That light has been there ever since. This is a year and a half, right? And sometimes it's a mystery because I grew up in Korea, the other side of the world, and you grew up here, never been, I was never been to New Hampshire before, Rochester, New Hampshire before. And you were also in many different places, you from many different places. We are all together here. Somehow we found connection. Right? Isn't it amazing? You know, we have different backgrounds, we have different experiences, we have different lives. But somehow, we feel so connected because we are led by the same light. We found the same light and we are following that same light. And that is what's amazing to me, that you are the ones that led me to Back to the light. Back to the light. I almost left the ministry before I got to this church. And I am so glad I didn't. So are we. Yes. <laughs> your light is so bright. Your love of God is so bright. And love of church so bright. And love for one another is so bright. <coughs> and this light shines upon other people's lives just as you did for me. And this will continue because I see this light continuing to shine upon Rochester and beyond. So remember that. Remember that you are the beacon of the world. So now it's your turn. Remember someone 
who gave you the light of Christ? And what qualities or what, um, what aspects of their, um, their life or their way of um, helping you that you want to carry on? You want to take and practice. This relationship we have with Jesus is open-ended. As Jesus said, whoever believes in me and whoever act in the light will have eternal life. And it may have trouble. We may go back and forth in the light and the darkness. We, our switch may be turned off and on and off and on many times in your life, in our lives. And yet, always remember, this is open-ended. It is really up to us whether we can continue to be the light and continue to follow Jesus' light and be the light of Christ. That's the new covenant that we have. And that's the covenant that God is counting on us. So go ahead and write your people of inspiration and then help us understand how the light came <coughs> to your life. Prayer requests are made for Marlene Guay, who is having surgery on her back on Tuesday, uh, March 12th. Um, so please um, keep Marlene in your prayers. And 
um, Karen Manning's sister, Kathy Town, um, for healing and comfort. Um, Jackie Kelly's family, um, she passed away on March 8th. So please um, keep, their, keep the family in your prayers. Um, Charles Wilcox and his family, um, Kevin Ninja's uncle, um, as he is in the hospice care. Um, also, there's some um, joy to share. Um, our Spalding hockey team had the state run-up chance. They got second place, is it? Okay, they got second place. And um, Diane Joseph's grandson is um, part of the team, so we're so <laughs> proud. <laughs> proud of um, them all and um, our young people who bring us so much energy and joy. Um, we also need to keep them in our prayers. Yes, Kenny, what would you like to say? The announcement of the sign-up sheet for the prayer vigil. Okay. Yes, um, we're going to um, pray for 24 hours from Monday, Thursday to Good Friday. So um, there's like time slot for an hour. You can do two hours. Um, downstairs. Um, this is to keep Jesus' word. He said, um, stay awake and be with me. Um, you know, on, on Monday Thursday as we celebrate um, his life and most important day um, in his life um, that on the cross for, us, for all of us to share his love. So please sign up. Now let us sing together our prayer song. to God. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for your unconditional and immeasurable love for us through Jesus Christ. Even when we are drawn to darkness, his light comes into our lives, allowing us to see the path to your love. And we are grateful. And we ask you to help us to keep our lights on so that others may see their path to your love. We pray on behalf of the world as many are drawn to the darkness of war, conflict, violence, and hate, leading others to the path of suffering. God, we fervently pray to you to bring them a ceasefire and peace, reconciliation, and healing. We pray for the people who follow Jesus to continue to shine their light so that those in the darkness can find their path to your love. God, we also ask your healing and strength for those who suffer from medical conditions and weakness of their bodies, minds, hearts, and spirits. Cast your warm, bright, and loving light 
upon them so that they can recognize your gentle yet unwavering light of love. Help us, O oh God, and equip us to keep our lights on as others did for us so that the world around us may become brighter with your radiant light through us. We pray in the name of Jesus, who continue to invite all God's children to the open-ended relationship, and we are honored, honored to call him our Lord and Savior, brother and friend, who taught us, so now we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. worship service with the presentation of our tithes and offerings to God. and thanksgiving 
we offer you what is yours. Bless these offerings and bless all these things that we give in the name of love. We are grateful that we can support others in distress, in natural disasters and human disasters, and those that are short of all the necessary materials. Bless them as well as they are your children and help them to continue to see the light of Christ so that they may continue to live and thrive in their lives and in their faith. Amen. Our hymn of dedication is the hymn number 159, Lift High the Cross. that I totally forgot Amazing Grace. <laughs> How can I do that? I need Amazing Grace. Sorry. <laughs> so we will sing Amazing Grace. <laughs> Sorry, Kevin. <laughs> so as we leave this place, know that the light 
has come into your life and know that the love of God will continue to shine upon you. Go in peace. May the light of God, light of Christ, light of the Holy Spirit always be upon your life wherever you go and whatever you do, whoever you meet, in the name of God. Amen. Amen.